Hey friends, Sean Foyt here, and I'm so honored and excited to share with you what I see God doing across our nation. Uh, to be really honest with you, I did not have a lot of hope several months ago. Uh, like many Americans, and especially Christians, you know, really, really was just bummed and disappointed at uh, not just the response of the church to this global pandemic, but uh, the response to these crazy government restrictions that we're seeing imposed in different places uh, across America. I live in California, and so we've really borne the brunt of these uh, these crazy regulations, including you know, a ban on singing in church. If you could believe in America in 2020, if there's anything as crazy as that. Um, but I'll tell you, man, my heart has been so stirred because over the last few uh, weeks, really the last month, um, I have seen a move of God break out before my very eyes that I just would have never thought of, would have never, you know, it's kind of like that verse that says, you wouldn't believe it even if you were told. Like, I mean, even if somebody had told me that 2020 would be the greatest hour of revival in America, I, I would have never believed them but I'm seeing it, I'm experiencing it, um, we're living in it right now. Uh, we had a, uh, several weeks ago, after that order came down from the governor here in California, I was just with some, some friends, some worshipers, and I was like, you know what, guys, we need to take a stand. We need to stand up, we need to, uh, to do something crazy. Like, I, I believe these are the hours for the church, like we gotta get out of the box. You know, of course, the church has left the building, which is our statement, uh, but it's time, to, it's time to get crazy, it's time to get risky, it's time to to take worship out, you know, into into the places of darkness and the places of uh, of hopelessness. And so we rallied about 400 uh, worshipers um, in San Francisco, and uh, we met on the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, which is just iconic. It, it represents so much. I don't have time to get into it, but we felt like that would be a really strategic and prophetic place to release a sound and really and really take a stand. So 200 of us started from the south end of the Golden Gate Bridge, and 200 started from the north end, and uh, we didn't realize we got there that it's such a long bridge. You know, it's like two miles long, but we met in the middle. And uh, in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge, we, re we, we worshiped for about two hours. We prophesied, we declared, and we really released a, 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 a song and a sound that said, the Western Gate is now open. And immediately as we began to worship, cool, cool thing is the, the police showed up, about 20 police officers showed up on the bridge. And, uh, you know, of course, it, you know, 400 people on the Golden Gate Bridge packed together is quite a sight. And I asked them when they came up to us, you know, hey, uh, what, what are you coming for? Are you here to kick us off or what? And the officers actually said, no, we're here to protect you. And so it was really cool. They, they blocked off an entire lane on the Golden Gate Bridge and basically made a firewall, the police did, so that we could worship. And it was really special. And I feel like something in the spirit was opened up um, that at that moment, like as we decreed and as we declared and as we stood um, in defiance of this fear and intimidation that's come against the church, uh, God did something, not only in our hearts, of course, I was with a very diverse uh, group of leaders and pastors. I mean, it, it was very diverse ethnically, you know, it was white, black, Asian, Hispanic, but uh, it was very diverse too in denominations. Like we just rallied together. It wasn't about a label. It wasn't about a name. It wasn't about a brand. It wasn't about a personality. It was just let us worship. And so we, we kicked it off there at the Golden Gate Bridge and the next day we were in Huntington Beach, California in Orange County and we rallied over a thousand people uh, and, and, and people just started getting saved like left and right. We saw salvations, miracles, signs and wonders. We baptized I think over 50 people that night in, uh, in Huntington Beach uh, and then we went to LA and on the streets of Los Angeles, uh, 1,500 people gathered. And you know, these worship gatherings are so raw. Like they're so raw, they're so real, they're so honest. We don't always have the best bands or the best PA. We don't have LED screens. It's just in the, you know, we were in, in LA, we were literally in a cul-de-sac, you know, the end of a cul-de-sac and we came together and the power of God showed up and people got delivered. People that were about to commit suicide threw their pills away. And then we just kept building we went to New York City. We gathered in Washington Square in New York City 
God broke out, really ground zero of COVID in Washington Square. We saw God break out like never before. It was powerful. Uh, we baptized people in the fountains in Washington Square Park in the middle of New York City. We went to Connecticut. We went to New Jersey. And then we've just completed a, a five-day uh, long trip through uh, California, or five-city tour through California. We were in Redding. And then we went to uh, Bakersfield, California. We had the mayor and some state senators join us. We gathered in a park, about a thousand people in a park. And uh, we went to Fresno in front of City Hall where 1,500 people gathered. And an African-American pastor, a young pastor friend of mine who's just fed up and he's ready to take a stand. We set up a stage in front of City Hall. And literally we prophesied and declared over that city and an, an opening of the springs. And then we baptized people in the fountains at City Hall in Fresno. It was just, it was phenomenal. Uh, and then we continued uh, the journey. We went to... Um, uh, we went to Pasadena. We went to uh, uh, all the way down. We ended the time in San Diego. And on the beach there in San Diego, we saw over 5,000 people gather. And we saw hundreds of salvations. We baptized over 200 people. And what was amazing is I got to baptize my own son, which was really special, my six-year-old son, that night. And of course, now, you know, all the major mainstream media outlets have picked up on it. LA Times wrote a, you know, front page article, Re Re Revival on the Beach in California. I was on, you know, Fox and Friends and about to go on with them again and share stories and testimonies. I just feel like Americans, not only are they hungry for good news, you know, we've seen this, these stories of our cities burning and rioting and looting. We've heard fear and, and, and there's an agenda at play. And one of the most powerful things we can do as believers is get together and worship. We can get together and worship and gain perspective for what God is doing. We can get his heart over our city. We can get encouraged. We can get filled with hope. Um, we can change the storyline of 2020. I believe it. And what I am seeing, I feel like the Lord is speaking to me about another Jesus people movement coming to America. I believe a lot of it's going to start in California. Uh, I was on, standing on the beach there in Corona del Mar from those famous iconic pictures where, you know, Lonnie Frisbee and, and Chuck Smith are baptizing people in the Pacific Ocean. Hippies that were, you know, tripping out on acid were getting saved. And uh, my heart just has been groaning that in my generation and in this hour that God would do it again and that the latter rain would be greater than the former. And so I just want to close with an appeal to you guys. If you could be praying for us this weekend, we really feel called to take this this presence, this atmosphere of worship, this call of, of the presence of God, this breaker, you know, sound. We really feel called to take it into uh, to tough situations and, and, and tumultuous cities and places people think are too far gone. And we've been doing that for the last 15 years. You know, we've been taking worship into Iraq, you know, at the height of ISIS. I was in Afghanistan after 9-11. Um, I've gone into North Korea. Uh, I've had some really cool opportunities, but now I feel compelled to do the same thing in my own nation. And so this weekend, uh, Saturday night, we're going to be gathering in Portland, Oregon on Riverfront in Riverfront Park, right there in the middle of all the insanity. And, uh, and we're gathering the church. We're gathering together and we're taking a stand. We refuse to be silenced. We refuse to be intimidated. We are going to take our stand as Christians have been doing for 2,000 years and we're going to worship. And we're going to believe that God is going to come with power, that people are going to get saved, people are going to get healed, and that we're going to shift the atmosphere over that city. Sunday night, we're doing the exact same thing, but we're going into Seattle and we're going to be gathering at Cal Anderson Park, right where CHOP, uh, formerly called CHOP, that whole area that you see in that autonomous zone, that's where we're going to gather. And it's ground zero of, of rebellion and, and, and craziness and lawlessness. Uh, but we believe that God is stronger. We believe that, that, that his call on, on, on the worshipers is greater. And so please just be praying with us. We, we need a lot of prayer um, and we need a lot of, uh, you know, support. If you feel like donating and, and being a part of this, we would love that. Uh, we, I started a petition called Let Us Worship. 
uh, really to preserve our, you know, our religious liberties and to take a stand against some of these these crazy ordinances coming down from governors. Um, and we have, uh, I think, 30 or 40,000 signatures already. You can go to letusworship.us. Letusworship.us. You can sign the petition. You can donate for what we're doing. Uh, we're just getting started. I just today uh, released an invitation to the governor of California to come to a worship gathering we're having in Sacramento in front of the Capitol on September 6th. We're gonna meet on the Capitol steps. We're inviting the governor. It's gonna be an amazing time. So I love you guys. There's a quick update for me. These are great days we're living in. These are seasons of revival. Don't buy into the, to the mainstream media narrative. Press into the heart of God and join us on this journey. Hopefully I'll be back to you soon. God bless.